Hello and welcome, my name is Meeplus, they, she, he, and this is Literally Graphic. And today I want to take a look at Magic Fish by Chung Le Nguyen, a contemporary fiction young adult graphic novel mixed with fairy tale published by Random House Graphic in 2020. Content notes for soldiers, death, refugees, a priest, and homophobia. The about section on Chung's website is, quote, a Vietnamese American comic book artist and writer from Minnesota. He was born in a refugee camp somewhere in the Philippine province of Palawan. Chong has also contributed work for DC Comics, Oni Press, Boom Studios, and Image Comics. He currently lives in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and raises three very spoiled hens. He is fond of fairy tales, kids' cartoons, and rom-coms of all stripes. End quote. What kinds of keywords came to mind reading this book? Family, magic, stories, disconnected, fairy tale, self-discoverer, coming out, and friendship. Quote, Tian loves his family and his friends, but Tian has a secret he's been keeping from them, and it might change everything. An amazing YA graphic novel that deals with the complexity of family and how stories can bring us together. Real life isn't a fairy tale, but Tian still enjoys reading his favorite stories with his parents from the books he borrowed from the local library. It's hard enough trying to communicate with your parents as a kid, but for Tian, he doesn't even have the right words because his parents are struggling with their English. Is there a Vietnamese word for what he's going through? Is there a way to tell him he's gay? End quote. A beautifully braided story and winner of two Harvey Awards, we move through the present and into many different kinds of fairy tales, and back again, over and over and over again. Our main protagonist, Tian, is stuck at a roadblock, and the story just keeps building and building, sprawling up, down, and sideways as it keeps pushing at the single point. That is, the worst to tell his mother who he is. The delicate and finely detailed artistry really complemented the story in many ways, the costumes in particular are simply incredible, and the use of color was next level. Sexuality and gender to a certain extent obviously played a big role in this coming out story. Nguyen does a good job, in my opinion, balancing the homophobia of the time, including referencing the murder of Matthew Shepard via a news broadcast, with a big helping of love and acceptance from many in Tian's immediate life. As someone who grew up in a conservative religious background, I really appreciate how much love Tian's family and friends have for him. Heritage, fleeing your homeland, and language are also very key aspects of the story. Nguyen communicates a lot effortlessly about what it has meant to him being a queer Vietnamese American, feeling disconnected from your parents because your experience is so different, and the physical distance between him and his grandmother. Class felt a bit brushed over, and I don't recall anything much diverting from assumed able-bodiedness. Overall, I could say that this book is an amazing debut graphic novel. I was blown away by the art and the story. I don't generally mark things as must-read, and I won't necessarily start now, but it gets pretty darn close. Not only is it entertaining, I feel like anyone can learn a lot about the art of comics by picking up this book and studying it. By all, keep reading an organized and capitalist depression. And as always, Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.